can go and print review and it with a seal and signature and everything. Okay. The placement of seal and all those things, we can define it directly. And uh, next thing, like the other details, other details in this invoice. If you are doing uh, like uh, rental business or uh, uh, where you have to specify the period when the invoice starts and mm -hmm. when it ends, you can use the invoice start date. Let's say it is going to from this period, from this time to this time, or uh, from 1st of January to 31st of January, mm -hmm. we are invoicing for you like this. Mm -hmm. So I can specify the invoice notes also you can keep. This will reflect in the service oriented businesses. It will show you the invoice period from this day to this day, something like that. So here I will just save this information and uh, now let's save and close this. I made one invoice to this company called Basat Company Limited. I'm going to change this also to Basat Company for example. I'm going to make Basat. So I have two invoices made for Basat Company. One is uh, for 62,000 and another one is for 20,000. So there's two invoices I made. The status of this invoice is not processed. What does it means? Not processed. Not processed means I prepared the invoice. Maybe I wait for my verification or the approval from my uh, team, and then I have to send this one to my client. And once he agreed, then I will post it into the book of accounts. Mm -hmm. So before that, I will not process this one and put it in my book of accounts. Just now I created it. Maybe I am still continuing to edit it. Before verification, I can just come and change anything, and then I can review it. Maybe today I saved it and I wait for my manager to review it and accept it. Maybe some price changes or uh, some quantity changes are there, I should take the approval from it. So let's say this uh, invoice, let's say take this invoice and he want to verify it. He will just click on verify. So when I click on verify, this option will be, this invoice will be set as verified. And now after verification, I can have the printout and give it to my client now. The client will accept this. They will receive it and they will stamp it and give it to you. Yes. Uh, some service businesses and all, they might take long time to uh, uh, approve and give it to us. Or maybe they will take two, three days. For uh, uh, rental, uh, this uh, trading businesses, they used to sign once the material comes in, they used to sign and give it to you. But some kind of uh, businesses, they take time for this. So you can monitor this. How many invoices is still hold with that client? Mm -hmm. So here you can come here. Once the client approved and give it to us, we can click on approved. Mm -hmm. Once the status is now, the status will be changed to approved, and it will log the invoice also. Mm -hmm. There is no editing will be allowed after the <coughs> approval came in, because it is not good to change because the client approved it and and the client accepted it. It should be reflected the same amount I should not nobody should change it so I will lock it but in case sometimes the client will come after two days they will say oh there is something mistake you want to correct it how do I correct it we can have the option to unlock this invoice so you can unlock it and you can correct it also so unlock will remove that uh, approval and it will show you that it is still in the verification stage you can continue editing it you can go and change anything you want and you can set it up for you. Now I reprint it and send it to that. I can just simply go on approve it. Now the client changes, the, the information changed and I approved it and it is already done. Now what is the next step of the invoice? I prepared the invoice, I verified it, I submitted it and approved it. Now I have to show to bring it to my book of accounts. Mm. In the book of accounts, it has to be accounted as a revenue mm. and the VAT should be paid and all these things should be going to my book of accounts in the drive balance, balance sheet and all these uh, areas it has to affect. So for that, I need to post the invoice to the ledgers. Okay. You have to post this invoices to the ledgers. Mm. When I click on post the invoice, it says that there is some error, you cannot continue like this mm -hmm. because I missed some uh, fields which is necessary for posting. Mm -hmm. So what is that fields? It shows that, say okay, you can see there is a marker for errors. Mm -hmm. So it, say, it says that the revenue account must be entered before posting. 
and it also shows the call center should also be chosen before you post it. So, yeah, it is mandatory. It just locks me. I cannot post this one because with this I cannot. It will not allow you to. So I can come here. I will change. This is from the income from or revenue from trading, and I can have my call centers. Let's say. This is one project going on. Let's say I have order number seven seven eight eight. In that order, I am going to book it under this. Something like that. I can post this now. Now this invoice is set as posted. This is the amount I my revenue, and this is my taxable amount, and this is my total amount to be received. Now let's see how this reflects in the book of accounts. We can go to finance, and in finance. The accounting ledgers. All my journal entries will be there. I can go to journal accounting ledgers. I can choose Basad, Basad Company. From which day to which day I want to see the transaction. Click on Show Records. Now, when I click on Show Records, it shows that there is a debit transaction happened for this particular amount for sixty-five thousand one forty-two. If I want to open that voucher, I can just simply click on it. It will open the voucher for me. So the invoice is prepared in that, in the item and all those things are there. But when it comes to the book of accounts, it has to pass a journal entry. Uh, to debit the client, credit the income account, revenue account, and credit the item sale account. This is my revenue. This is my tax liability, and this is my receivable. So it goes to the necessary book of accounts with the double entry system. It goes automatically. Now, if I want to see the invoice here, I can go and preview the invoice also directly. It will open the invoice for me. If I want to see the voucher, I can also see the voucher directly from here. So this is the voucher is the debit and credit of that invoices, okay? And uh, uh, this is how it reflects in the book of accounts. Once they sign that stamp, if you want to keep a copy of this uh, Sign invoice, signed copies, you can keep it here itself. We have attachments options, so I can keep that option here. I can attach and keep it in. Here. This is like you saw the attachments. It will open up and then attach the file and save it. In there. It stores in the server. And if I want to see it, I can come and review it. Also, I can attach from here also. Here also, there is an option to attach the document. Suppose if I am going to keep that file, uh, I am the one getting it, and I am the one scanning it in there, so I can keep it in the voucher. Mm -hmm. Or the sales people are doing; the sales people can do it in their uh, sales register. Mm -hmm. Both the things available. Clear? So now let's close this one. Basad is now. I need to receive money sixty-five thousand from Basad. Mm -hmm. We made one more invoice, so let's post this. That one, and see how this one flies in the book of accounts. Go to sales register. Okay, I have to see Basad here. Basad here. This is twenty thousand revenue and twenty one thousand to be received. Simply right click on it, edit. If I don't have the cycle of uh, verification, approval, and posting, so I am the only one doing all these things. I can skip the verification and approvals, and directly I can click on post ledgers. So I don't want to waste time on. Um, clicking on this here also, I missed one thing to enter. So it says that choose the revenue account. So I will choose the revenue from uh, trading activities and then click on post to ledgers. So now this book goes to the book of accounts and lock it. It will approve, lock it, and then it will post it in the book of accounts. Now if I go and check my book of uh, book for Basad uh, from February, I have two invoices. Mm -hmm. So sixty-five thousand plus twenty-one thousand total eighty-six thousand. I have to receive from. This is the ledger book for them. And uh, in the invoice, there is few aspects are there, like the due dates, right? The important part is the due date of payment collection. Mm -hmm. So I can also set that one in the invoice itself. If I go here, I will see the invoices. To be received, invoice due date will be automatically okay. coming. So, based on the client, say for example, this client, I I, I can set the information how many days credit, credit, credit period. period I can set it up. If I go and edit this ledger, I can see the settings. I can set number of days credit periods, okay. thirty days. So it, it automatically states nineteenth February to. 
30 days, it will be 20 March. It stays automatically and it gives to me. Sometimes you, our agreement with the client may be that uh, this, no, the invoices will be will be based on the submission date, not on the invoice date. So, for example, I, I the invoice I prepared it today, but the submission is going to be happen on 23rd only. But the date of uh, due date will be starting from the date of submission, not from the date of uh, invoice. So here I can say I submitted this on. Uh, going to be submitting this on 23rd of Sunday only, they will be receiving it. So, who is going to submit it no, by, by whom? And if I use this tick button, it will automatically change this to from the date of submission. So, it will be reflected as 24th of March, not 20, uh, 19th of March or 17th of March. So, it takes 30 days from the date of submission, not from the date of invoice. So, you can have this option also available. Right now I have two invoices which has the same uh, client. Let's give us up. So these two invoices are ready to to be uh, what's that? to be uh, requested for the payment. Now this is eighty six thousand we need to receive from them. So I need to at the date of say for example on uh, the day of due the thirty days I have to send a statement to them. So can you? Uh, these are all pending. If you don't ask, they will not pay. <laughs> so, so we need to send a reminder to them. Just these are all the pending payments from you. I have to remind them. In the system, you can also specify. Let's say this invoice. It is going to be due on. Uh, it's on the same date as. Okay. Say this invoice is going to be due on 30 of March. So. In 30 of March, this invoice is going to uh, auto automatically the system will send on 30 March will send a reminder to your uh, to the client or you can send it to your salesperson who is responsible for collecting the payment. We are going to discuss about those things. So it will send a reminder on this day to your salesperson or the person who is going to collect the bill bill collectors. So what will be the format of the? Yeah, I'm going to show you. So now this. Form, this will be sent to him as a PDF file and it will be, uh, he can review it and he can forward it from his own mail because otherwise what will happen, it will send from our email to your client, they will not uh, okay. recognize it or it's, no, it's wrong or otherwise you have to send, give us an email address where we can uh, set it up in the server and it will send from your special email account. So better, we'll send it to your people, they verify and then only it will be forwarded to so what, what is the report it is going to send? I want to take the receivable statement. Here we have three reporters there. One is receivable all by account and aging. Let's go and take a look at this receivables. If I see here, I have set the due date of this one on 17th of February. So it's already due. You got it? 17th of February, we set it up as due is on 17th of February. So it is it's due already. Two days, it's already. 19th February, I made one invoice. It is due on 20 March. And this is the bill number, date, and everything is available in here. So the total amount I have to receive, it is 6,000. And it is also showing you the aging. Aging will be showing for not overdue. This is less than 30 days. We have 65,000 to be received like this. And you can export this one directly to a PDF file or a Excel file, whatever file format you want, and then you can send it to the email. Clear? Yes. Now, is signatures also it will be automatically. Uh, at present, no signatures are here. We can set it up later on. If you want, we can have that. Yes, yes, yes. And then it's done everything, yeah. Mm, normally, uh, because they will take, they don't have to put the seal here. Okay, we'll see that. Okay. Now, this is the receivables report. We have, uh, right now, we, I send this uh, information to my client already. The client will say, okay, I want to, uh, I will pay you by cash or uh, bank, I will transfer this money to you. And so, what are, the money comes in two weeks, as we discussed last time, it will be coming by cash or bank. So, we can have cash receipt or bank receipt. Okay, this two we will be saying. Let's say we are going to receive like uh, 50,000 partial payment from this or uh, full payment of one bill or all the two bills together. 
So let's receive partial payment. Mm. We are going to receive the money in our bank account. Mm. So I can click on bank receipt. So here the bank voucher number, the receipt voucher number will be automatically added. Voucher date, effective date and the which bank you are going to receive. receive just now. I received in Riyadh. Okay. okay. And here I can choose from from where yeah. I received it. So I will say Basar. Basar, I will receive 50,000 Riyadh. So I am going to receive partial payment for the spell. So I will say partial When I click on add, this entry will automatically pass the journal entry for you. Mm. This add addition will be automatically passing the journal entry, debit the bank account and credit the client account for 50,000 real. So you don't need to pass the journal entry manually. Mm. Here and also the system knows that and it shows that what is the reference you got for this, for what, which bill you got it. So here the reference numbers, two bills are there. Mm. So 65 and 21,000. I have many bills are pending mm. for many different clients. But for Basar, I have 65 and 21. So I will just choose this. 65. When I click on it, it takes only the 50,000, which mm. is less amount and click on add. Now this is, this 50,000, I adjusted against this particular mm. bill numbers. And I can go back and save and close this one. Now, if I go and click on show records or refresh, you will see okay. 36,000 to be yes. used. So it says 2065. This is the credited amount. And it is received in by uh, yeah. Riyadh Bank. This is the income from trading account. So all these things are automatically shown to you. You go to the report now, receivable statement, and receivables. Now it shows me, I have bill wise, it will show me also the debit and credit if you want you can take it also 65 minus 50 we have 15,000 left on this bill now if they are going to pay you the rest of the amount 36,000 I want to clear it off I can go and receive cash receipt okay, just for the sample we are going to do cash receipt you can have different petty cash accounts for different people yes. say for example I can have the sales person I can have one one Mr. Jitto his name is Jitto he is the one collecting the payments and he is keeping the records for the cash so I can give a cash record a petty cash account for him I can have as many as petty cash holders accounts so let's say Jitto account okay and I'm going to say I'm going to receive the money from Basar and how much I'm going to receive let's say I'm clearing all the full bill okay let's say final payment of payment from no? something like that I just give the narration and I add it and I added the same principle the journal is passed now it shows me I have to which will you against which bill you received it I can select the first bill clearance and I can select the next bill also and when I'm adding it I'm not typing any numbers or anything mm -hmm. you are just selecting it only mm -hmm. so the error of choosing amount total amount and all those things it's handled by the system automatically so I just come here choose which bill it takes the amount whether is it less or more uh, it, it automatically sure. takes it for you go back and save and close now if I go the balance is zero. Right. I can go to receivable statement, receivable or it shows me zero. It cleans, cleans up this one. If you want, you can take the, the statement also. Sometimes they will ask you, some companies they will ask you, give me uh, account ledger statement, not the receivable statement. If you go here, it will show me how much is debit, how much is credit. Mm -hmm. This is a standard uh, format. You, you can send this one also along with the receivables report with also okay this will be in both English and Arabic okay because this is a ledger account so you need to keep the books also in Arabic clear okay so this is how you maintain your book of accounts by the ledgers so what we did we did we just take a recap we made we went to the sales invoice register there you added your sales invoices two invoices we have added 
and we verified approved and uh, posted it to the book of accounts and in the book of accounts it goes to the accounting ledger i checked it went there and i started after the, uh, checking the basat account i have two bills pending so i received the payment i put it in the bank account 50000 and then they gave me a cash account cash account 36000 so balance is closed for them okay now when i received this 50000 it is received in real bank so my real bank should be increased by 50000 right so let's go and check that real bank account so i, I can choose it from here it's a real bank and show the accounts now it's yours 50 yesterday i have 828 now i have 50000 more 878 came from basat company as the bank statement also will be there it is there okay. you need to maintain that bank statement exactly the same way you can have a look whether it is yes, it is came on yeah there is, it, there is bank reconciliation statement is also here you can go to reports bank yeah we can even also i'm going to show you same bank receipt also here you can we are going to talk about this one i will show you one thing and then we will be discussing okay let's say so let's say uh, i have this basat uh, company right so this amount uh, before i was going to say we'll change this one to uh, real bank We'll change it to uh, Saudi Fancy. Let's say I receive this money. I'll add it again. Okay, let's let's add one more. I'm going to receive the bank bank receipt instead of Saudi Fran um, Real Bank. I'm going to receive it in Basat account. So just uh, I'm adding it against this bill. I'm Let's say when close this one. Now I received this money and I closed already. The full final payment is closed now. When I take the bank account, let's say Bank uh, South Francie. Now in the South Francie bank account, yesterday I have six hundred eighty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. Today I received a check of fifty thousand. Right? Okay. okay. This check is not yet clear. Mm -hmm. Not posted. Not. I mean, it's posted already. Okay. In, in our books, I posted already. Okay. In my account now, it should be seven hundred thirty-eight thousand, mm. right? Okay. But it it should not be reflected in the bank account because I, the check is still with me. Okay. Maybe today only I am going to deposit okay. it in the bank. Uh -huh. So I can check the bank reconciliation comparisons. Mm. So when I check here, until yesterday I completed, my bank account will show six hundred eighty thousand. Mm. Mm. Okay, so six hundred eighty-eight thousand I will have. I received this check from Basat, but it is still with me. Mm -hmm. It is not yet cleared in the bank account. Mm -hmm. So when I am showing this report to my manage manager, this report will be going to him. He can review it. How much I have in my bank right now? Six seven hundred thirty eight or six hundred eighty eight? Mm -hmm. The correct is six hundred eighty eight only because mm -hmm. I am having one check of fifty thousand rupees which is not yet cleared. Mm -hmm. So what I will do? I will write the status for him because every day morning. I will review it mm. and keep the status ready with me. Tomorrow morning, when I get the new bank statement, I check the bank account. Mm. I will update the status mm. also. Is it clear or mm. not? Mm. Let's see. Uh, check um, or uh, postdated check received or postdated check uh, received. Postdated will be also yeah. Yeah. Postdated post check received. So I will say it will be cleared on. A particular date, something like that. So I can deposit. I I will just show to my manager that this is already read and done. I accounted in the receivables, or I can say it is on hold, on hold or uh, waiting for uh, deposit, something like that, to be deposited. So I can add this information. This information will be shown to my manager as a report. It will be going daily basis. You can see it. Once it's cleared, I will say it's clear. So when I go to the finance dashboard, he checks the dashboard. What is the bank balances? Let's say cash balances. He will see in uh, Saudi Francie he has seven hundred thirty-eight. He has seven hundred thirty-eight. He click on it. 
he can see ah okay it's not 738 we have still 150000 we are check is still pending yeah. so he will be reviewing this also this report will be available for him clear and uh,